It was Padma Aon, within his book The Christ Blueprint who had this to say about the Archons and Eons. He was however, as far as I can understand in this understanding, coming from a perspective of the astral planes where it all plays out along with and within the third dimensional planes. But these beings, not just reptilian in nature, also play out their roles from even higher planes of existence, in fact, up to the ninth dimensional levels, which are indeed extremely powerful entities. So here is what we are dealing with, to give each of you a clearer understanding of what Helios has shared in the Elemental Grace Alliance and what we are now moving into position to balance and clear from this system of worlds. Yeshua said, I am the Christ and the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a key part of the Christ. It was anchored 2000 years ago as part of the Christ blueprint. It consists of the 12 shadow signs of the body of Christ, all embodied into one living thought form. The Antichrist is the polar opposite of the Christ. It will be fully anchored on earth by February 2008. It is here to provide the tension, the friction, the push and pull of duality, to propel us into unity consciousness. The Antichrist is an energy field that surrounds the whole earth, and is controlled by various beings, mentioned in the Gnostic Gospels by Yeshua, called Darkons and Eons. These are the rulers of the collective consciousness of humanity, the manipulators behind the scenes of our life force, and consciousness. Until we are resonating at love and joy, we are still feeding these rulers, and they are still controlling us. Until we resonate at love and joy, we still have a negligible effect on the collective consciousness. As soon as we step into joy, we change the collective, balancing thousands of people by our mere presence alone. From an evolutionary perspective the Antichrist has to fully embody on earth before Christ consciousness can fully reappear. The darkness is necessary in order for the light to appear. Perhaps circumstances have to get so bad to reach a climax point in order for a more enlightened civilization to sprout, phoenix-like, from the ashes of the old. Therefore the Antichrist has a definite purpose, to serve as a catalyst, a point of tension. In any state of heightened tension or friction there is far more possibility of transformation, as well as a new creation, as you are accessing deep emotions and energy in this stretching. We have to stretch and challenge ourselves in order to really grow to reach our full potential. The ways that this stretching, or additional tension is occurring is obvious on a planetary scale, ecological crisis, wars, terrorism, mass extinction of species, loss of nature, pollution, mass media controls over public thought and opinion, and personal upheavals and transformations. All designed to wake us up to what is happening, and do something about it in our own way. For the matrix created by the Antichrist is a chrysalis constructed by our own thoughts, fears, desires and subconscious, in order to prepare us for our next phase of evolution, the next wave. Its dissolution can only happen once we have learned and mastered the lessons from it, which is when it will have served its purpose. This is when humanity, as a collective, issues the cry that enough is enough. This matrix is the training ground which Yeshua himself exhorted us to not get lost in, for it is only a way station, the in-between stage to heaven and the higher worlds. In essence, we are now rapidly externalizing and manifesting the collective thoughts and subconscious of humanity throughout thousands of years in order to experience something new, something that we can claim, either arrogantly or with sole purpose, is ours.